yes. <laughs> Taking it to the streets here on the Patrick Regan Show. <laughs> that would be good. See some people uh, pull a little Egypt there and go up there and scream at our leaders a little bit, make them nervous. <laughs> You're listening to us here, as I just mentioned, on the Patrick Regan Show. We're the premier show of the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and here locally on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Here in this last segment, and I, I meant to get to this last uh, week, but I didn't have a chance to. I wanted to tell you about an election they had down in Australia. Now, the report ran on the Associated Press and states that, quote, Australia's conservative opposition swept to power Saturday, which, like I said, this was last week. I was, um, wanted to get to this, but uh, they swept to power Saturday, ending six years of Labor Party rule and winning over a disenchanted public by promising to end a hated tax on carbon emissions and boost a flagging economy. A victory for the conservative liberal, liberal party-led coalition comes despite the, relatively, or the relative unpopularity of Tony Abbott. He's a 55-year-old former Roman Catholic seminarian and Rhodes Scholar who has struggled to connect with women voters and was once dubbed unelectable by opponents and even some supporters. The article continues, one of the main reasons the Labor Party was defeated was its reneging on an election promise by imposing a deep, unpopular carbon tax on the nation. The swing away from labor was a resounding rejection of Australia's first minority government since World War II. Voters disliked the deals and compromises struck between Labor, the minor Greens Party, and independent lawmakers to keep their fragile, desperate, and or dis disparate, and, or it could be desperate, <laughs> and sometime chaotic coalition together for the past three years, including the carbon tax. You know, is it starting to sound a little familiar? Voters upset over some of the legislation the government was passing and imposing on the citizens, so they end up kicking out these people. Sometimes, uh, or this is something I think we're starting to see here in this country. It went on to say Abbott has vowed to scrap the carbon tax from July 2014. Two year, well, that's not right. It must be uh, scrap it during it because uh, it says two years after it's implemented, and introduce instead introduce taxpayer taxpayer funded incentives for companies to operate cleaner. It is unclear whether Abbott will be able to pass the necessary law changes through Parliament, but he has threatened to hold early elections if the Senate thwarts him. This is what I've been telling you. People are getting fed up with these government solutions to everything that end up causing more harm than good. Even if Obamacare gets implemented like this unpopular tax in Australia, we still have a chance to use it to flush out everyone who supported it along with their party if need be. Now, granted, Obamacare is a lot more complicated than a simple carbon tax, but Hopefully, it'll be the death knell for a lot of politicians' careers. Who knows? We might can even replace the two marge, major parties with other ones that would adhere to the Constitution better. You never know once the citizens of this country, you know, they start getting screwed over by this legislation, what, what they'll get together and do. The column goes on to say, Australia's new government has promised to slash foreign aid spending as it concentrates on returning the budget to surplus. Labor spent... Billions of dollars on stimulus projects to avoid recession, but declining corporate tax revenues forced labor to break a promise to return the budget to surplus in the last fiscal year. So a party sold the same story there that the Democrats and a lot of Republicans sell here. Tax the rich, tax the corporations, spend money on stimulus projects. None of it worked. This is why you need to read the news and... and try to learn from other countries' mistakes. This is how our founders meant our country to work, that states could try different things, and the successful states could be emulated by the ones that tried something else, and it didn't work. We all didn't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And this is what we've gotten away from. We have this overbearing, one-solution-fits-all federal government that thinks it knows everything and can fix anything from Washington, D.C., now, some of our younger listeners won't remember this, but we used to make fun of this same thing occurring in the old Soviet Union. These five-year plans that would be issued out of Moscow, regulating 
Well, everything. How much grain can be planted? How many beef cattle they can raise? How many cars to produce? Everything dictated from Moscow to everyone all across that huge continent. It never worked. There was there were always shortages and and problems with quality. It's because that system doesn't work. We've seen it doesn't. We've made fun of it. I'm making fun of it now. <laughs> Yet here we are trying to do the same thing in this country. It all boils down, boils down to look. The more we move back to our original values of American freedom and liberty the better off we'll be as a country. That will be easy. Well, honestly, no, it won't. There's a whole lot of money to be made off government, and both by people in it and people getting paid for it. And these people aren't going to be real eager to give up their free gravy train. But together working, hopefully we can make a dent in that and, and start getting this country turned around. And this radio show is my effort to try and get you started in that direction. Speaking of which, we're up on the last of the show here. If you want more information about us, you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. You can also go to our radio archives at youtube.com, again, Patrick Riggins Show. And can you guess the email address? Hey, it's probably Patrick Riggins Show at gmail.com. <laughs> or you can send a card alert to WOKI here in Knoxville. As we sign off, I want you to remember, liberty begins with you in your head, in your brain. Join me next Saturday afternoon at 4 when we'll again be fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. Thanks for listening and have a fantastic week. Expanding the view of the captain and crew like a man. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on the Patrick Riggins Show. 